Hello and welcome to another episode of the Pharmaceutical Calculation Solve Along. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at osmolarity calculations. This actually is part two in the five part series. So if you want to check the part one, I'll put links to that in the description and also in the cards. Now our goal is to become so good at solving osmolarity calculation questions that wherever we see them, we make it very easy to address. And we are going to do that by solving two questions on a consistent basis, which will expose us to a variety of scenarios in terms of the types of questions we can encounter. So let's dive right into the first question. And the question says, calculate the amount of milliosmoles present in a solution if it contains 400 milligrams of magnesium ion per liter round to the nearest hundred do not include units so when we talk about osmolarity normally they could ask you to calculate the osmolarity but in this question it just asks you to calculate the amount of milliosmoles but because it gave us information pertaining to one liter we can glean from the question that is asking us about osmolarity because osmolarity is actually milliosmoles per liter so the first thing we want to do is go ahead and put down the equation. So milliosmoles per liter is going to be equal to grams per liter divided by the molecular weight times the number of particles times 1,000. So we have an equation which has three unknowns, the quantity in grams per liter molecular weight and number of particles now if you did that a series of steps the first step is to make sure that you do know the molecular weight so the molecular weight for magnesium is going to be 24 and you can glean this information from the periodic table or if you've memorized the first 20 elements it will come readily to you because the atomic mass of magnesium is actually 24 and that's where we are getting that number from now, the other thing that we need is the number of particles. Here again, what we have is a magnesium cation, and that's the only species in this solution. So the number of particles is going to be two. Now, the only thing that remains is the quantity in grams per liter we've been given some information in terms of milligrams 400 milligrams per liter so we want to convert the milligrams to grams now what you will notice is when it comes to osmolarity calculations most of the variations in the questions that you will see has to do with how the information is given for you to calculate the grams per liter that's where most of the work is to connect the information from different concepts okay so in this example, we have 400 milligrams and we need to convert that. So 400 milligrams, if we convert that to grams, we need to make use of the conversion factor that 1000 milligrams is equivalent to one gram. So the milligrams cancel out and you end up with 0 0.4 grams. So now we are well equipped to put all the information into the equation. And that would imply that you have milliosmoles per liter being equal to 0 0.4, which is the quantity, divided by the molecular weight, which is 24, times the number of particles, which is 1, times 1,000. Now, by the way, if you have any questions, just put them in the chat or in the comments, and I'll try to answer them whilst we're solving the question. So now if you go ahead and do the math, that will give us 16.67. And notice that the question says round to the nearest hundred, do not include units. So that will be our answer, 16.67. Now let's delve a little bit deeper and see an alternative way to actually solve the same problem. So here we use this equation, but there's also the equation which says that milliosmoles is equal to millimoles times number of particles. And 
And this equation actually is based off the, this statement here, and I'll show you how it's connected. And the reason I show this equation is because it's a useful way to also solve the same question. Now, osmolarity is a concentration, so it's milliosmos per liter. This is a quantity. But what millimoles actually is, is milligrams divided by molecular weight. So we can actually rewrite this equation as milliosmos being equal to milligrams divided by molecular weight divided by the molecular weight times number of particles. So if we went ahead and divided both sides of the equation by a volume quantity, we've essentially kept the equation the same, but we have a new derivative of the equation. And we notice we have milliosmos per liter, which is osmolarity. So you can basically rewrite that equation as milliosmos per liter equals to milligrams divided by molecular weight divided by liters times the number of particles. So we have milligrams per liter, and that's 400, and we have the molecular weight. So what we can actually do, do now is to say that milliosmos per liter is equal to the 400, which is basically a milligrams per liter, divided by the molecular weight, which is 24, times the number of particles, which is one. And when we do the math, it gives us 16.67, which is essentially the same answer as we got in the previous approach. So now those are two very useful ways to solve this type of problem. And once you've understood the concept really well, you know how to choose and pick between these approaches, which one will work for you and which one will give the answer more expeditiously. So I don't see any questions yet. We'll move on to the next example. So here the question says, calculate the osmolarity of potassium acetate with molecular weight equal to 98 in a parenteral solution if 19.6 grams of potassium acetate is dissolved in 200 milliliters of the solution. Do not include units. So here we've been told directly to calculate osmolarity. And so we can start off with the equation, milliosmos per liter is equal to grams per liter divided by molecular weight times number of particles times 1,000. And if you are going to follow our steps, the first thing we want to determine is the molecular weight, but that's already been given us. So we don't need to calculate that or recall it from memory. The next thing that we do need is the number of particles. So here it's useful to know the molecular formula for potassium acetate, and that is actually K C2 H three O two. And when you put that in an aqueous environment or in water, it's going to dissociate into the potassium cation and the acetate anion. So in solution, you have two species. You have the potassium and then the acetate, which implies that your number of particles is actually equal to two. So the piece that remains is to actually figure out the grams per liter. But we do know from the question that you have 19.6 grams of potassium acetate in 200 milliliters of solution. So we can go ahead and set up a proportion which indicates that you have 19.6 grams divided by 200 milliliters. And that is equal to some quantity in grams divided by 1,000 milliliters. 
and the 1,000 is coming from the liters, which actually indicates that one liter is a 1,000 ml because we want to find out grams per liter. That's what we're doing on the right side of the equation. So we can go ahead and solve for X, which is our unknown. X equals 19.6 grams divided by the 200 milliliters times 1,000 ml. The mls cancel out. And then when we do the math, we end up with 98. So what we can actually do, so let's just keep the units in grams. But now what we can actually do is go ahead and put the information in the equation. So we have milliosmos per liter being equal to the quantity in grams per liter is 98. The molecular weight is also 98. Your number of particles is 2. And then we multiply by 1,000. So now if you go ahead and do the math, this cancels out and you are left with 2,000. So if we juxtapose this question with the previous one, we can notice a few variations. And in particular, there's a slight difference or quite significant difference between that question, how you're able to determine the quantity that you needed for the grams per liter. And so like I mentioned previously, that is where most of the variation will be in terms of the different types of questions that you do see. So I still don't see any questions in the chat or in the comments. And so I hope you found this video tutorial useful. Now, if you want to go ahead and actually practice some of these questions, you could do that. And you could head over to the quiz section. It will be these quizzes, so rscalculations.com forward slash osmolarity dash calculations dash quiz. And these are the questions that we are actually solving. So if you've followed part one and you are following part two, we've done four out of the ten. And these questions are designed to prepare you, especially if you are going to take the NAPLEX or some kind of board exam. It's timed in such a way that it's helping you track your speed. But by the time you are done with the five-part series, it would expose you to the real variety of questions that you need to be familiar with so that you, are, you have a solid handle on this type of concept of osmolarity calculations. So I hope you found this video tutorial useful. If you did, just give it a like and share it. And if you have any questions, just put them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.